Welcome to iLecture Online. So either you were able to figure it out and you're eager to see if you did it correctly, so you want to see what our solution is here, or you just couldn't figure it out and you're just dying to know how to do it. Well, either way, here's the solution to part A and to part B. First of all, how fast did the bird fly and what was the total distance covered by the bird by the time the train meets? Okay, first of all, we're going to use the concept that distance equals velocity times time. So that's going to come in handy. Secondly, we know that the total round trip took 0.5 hours. So let's assume that the time it took for the bird to go from here to meet the train on the right, let's call that T1. And let's say that the distance covered was D1. And that's a terrible looking D. So let me redraw that. So D1 and T1. So the bird took T1 amount of time to meet the other train and it covered D1 distance. And then the bird flew from there back to here to meet the train on this side. So that amount of time took T2 and the distance there covered is D2. Now notice we don't know time 1, we don't know time 2, we don't know the distance 1 or distance 2, and we don't know the velocity of the bird. That's a lot of unknowns. But what we do know is that the total time for the first round trip, T1 plus T2, took a half an hour. So we say that T1 plus T2 equals 0 0.5 hours. All right. Now, how would we describe distance 1? Well, the total distance is 100 kilometers minus this distance would equal distance 1. So we need to figure out what this distance is, so we can say that distance 1 is equal to the total distance 100 minus, and I'll just leave out the units for now to make it a little bit easier, we're dealing with kilometers and hours. So 100 kilometers minus, well, T1 times the velocity of the train, the train is going to 50 kilometers per hour, whatever T1 is, that is the distance the train covered, so it's going to be 50 times T1. And of course, distance one is the distance the bird traveled, and the bird travels with velocity v, and it took t1 time, so we can say that the velocity of the bird times t1 is equal to 100 minus 50 t1. And here's one very nice equation, but notice there are two unknowns in that equation, the velocity of the bird and t1, the time it took to reach the first train on the right. Okay, now we need to describe the the, the trip back. So that is a distance d2. So from here to here is distance d2. So d2 is equal to, now notice by the time the bird gets back, this train will have moved this far. How far? Well, 25 kilometers because the total round trip took a half hour and the train was moving at 50 kilometers per hour. So the train will have moved 25 kilometers by the time the bird gets back after half hour. After half hour, the train will have moved 25 kilometers. So the bird, distance two, will have been 75 kilometers, that would be from here to here, minus the distance the train covered in the first part of the time. That would be the same right here. So 50 minus 50 T1, 75 minus 50 T1. That is the total distance covered by the bird on the way back. And then again, distance 2 can be described as the velocity of the bird times t2, which is equal to 75 minus 50 t1. And so here is a second equation, but notice this equation has three unknowns in it. The velocity of the bird, time 2, and time 1. But then we have this right here. We have an equation to relate time 2 to time 1, so we can say that t2 is equal to 0 0.5 minus T1. And we can substitute that in here. So let's do that. So we get V times 0 0.5 minus T1, instead of T2, is equal to 75 minus 50 T1. And now notice the same equation not only has two unknowns, the very same two unknowns as we have in this equation. So these two equations now can be solved simultaneously because they both contain the two variables, velocity of the bird and t1, the time the bird took to go from left to the right. So what we should do now is solve for t1 
And what we're going to do here is we're going to take this equation right here and solve this equation for the velocity of the bird. So, coming up here, we can say that the velocity of the bird, v, is equal to 100 minus 50 t1 divided by t1. And we're going to take this equation and substitute it in for v in that equation. So let's do that. So instead of v, we're going to write this as 100 minus 50 t1 divided by t1. So that's instead of v. Multiply that times 0 0.5 minus t1. And that is equal to 75 minus 50 t1. And now this needs to be solved for t1, and now we'll know how long it took the bird to go from left to right. Okay, to solve that, we need to cross multiply. We'll take the t1 and move it over here, multiply everything out here, so we get 100 times 0.5, which is 50. 100 times minus t is minus 100 t1. Multiply these together, we get minus 25 t1. Multiply those together, we get plus 50 t squared equals, on the other side, we get 75 t1 and minus 50 t1 squared. So combining like terms, moving everything over to one side, we end up with 50 minus 125 t1 plus 50 t1 squared, which is equal to, oh, no, because I want to move this across, so minus 75 t1 and plus 50 t1 squared equals zero. And so now all we have to do is combine like terms, so we end up with 100 t1 squared minus 125 minus 200 t1, and we have plus 50 equals zero. So we obviously can divide everything by 50, and so that ends up with 2t1 squared minus 4t1 plus 1 equals 0. And here's a nice quadratic equation that we need to solve. I don't think we can factor that, so let's try it using the quadratic formula. t1 equals 4 plus or minus the square root of negative 4 squared, which is 4 squared minus 4 times a times c, this, all divided by 2a, which would be 4. Okay, okay, that gives us t1 is equal to 4 plus or minus the square root of 16 minus 8, which is 8, all divided by 4, which will give us two possible answers. So first, let's try the plus square root of 8. So we have 8, take the square root of that, plus 4, divide by 4 equals, we get 1.707, and of course that would be 1.707 hours. Well, that's not a possible answer because the total time of T1 plus T2 should be only a half an hour, and so that's not the possible answer. So the other answer is probably the correct answer, let's try that. So we're going to subtract the square root of 8 from 4, divide by 4, and we get 0 0.2929 hours. 0 0.2929 hours. And so this is not the possible answer. This would be then the correct answer from that equation. So now we know the time. Let's find the distance. So we go back to this equation right here and find the distance covered during that time. So d1 is equal to 100 minus 50 t1, which is 100 minus 50 times 0 0.2929, which will give us the distance the bird covers by the time the bird reaches the train on the right side for the first time. So that number times 50, and subtract that from 100, and we get a distance of 85.355 kilometers. 85.355 kilometers. And finally, now that we have the time and we have the distance from 
the left to the right, we can find the velocity, which is equal to distance divided by time. In this case, it will be distance 1 divided by time 1, which is 85.355 kilometers divided by 0 0.2929 hours. And so the velocity of the bird is... Two hundred and ninety one point four kilometers per hour. Two hundred and ninety one point four kilometers per hour. That's quite a fast bird. Now that's for part A. We finally found the velocity of the bird. What about the distance the bird covers in total? Well, notice that by the time the, tra the trains meet, one hour will have elapsed. If the total distance is 100 kilometers, and this train travels at 50 kilometers per hour, and this train travels 50 kilometers per hour, after one hour, each train will have traveled 50 kilometers, and they will then have met in the middle. That means that the distance flown by the bird, distance equals velocity times time, in this case, 291.4 kilometers per hour, times one hour, and so you can see that the distance is 291.4 kilometers. Total distance traveled by the bird. Okay, well part B was a little bit easier. What about part C? How many round trips? And maybe the number of round trips. Okay, well since the board is full, we'll start a new video. We'll give you a chance to try and figure that one out. You'll actually be very surprised with the result. And we'll do a third video to show you how to figure out the number of round trips by the time the two trains meet. That is how it's done.